first criticisms of early railroad technology was that smooth metal wheels would never have enough grip on smooth metal rails to ever be efficient. It would be impossible, said many of the 19th century naysayers, for a railroad of that sort to ever pull any amount of weight to be efficient. Luckily, history and physics proved them wrong. Smooth wheels on smooth rails are effective and remain the most efficient form of transportation today. However, there are still times when metal wheels do slip, usually when a train is first starting or when going uphill with a heavy load. To help increase traction, it was discovered that a fine layer of sand on the rails helped to prevent slippage, so the sand dome was developed, which was basically a large can situated on top of the boiler in which dried, sifted sand was stored. The engineer controlled when and how much sand was applied from the cab through tubes that ran from the dome down to the wheels early on through gravity, but later through the use of compressed air. When the sand dome was removed from Denver and Rio Grande Western No. 223, which is a Class C-16 narrow gauge locomotive built in 1881, and which is being restored in Ogden, Utah by the Golden Spike chapter of the Railway and Locomotive Historical Society, it provided a rare look at the inner workings of the sand dome. In the center of the base casting is a cone, which allows the sand to fall outwards towards the sand line valves through gravity. While gravitational force and the use of compressed air did force the sand through the lines to the rails, sometimes the sand would clump up, and in cold weather, freeze together, if it was not sufficiently dry or if moisture had leaked into the sand dome. To facilitate the smooth flow of sand, a special mechanism was created which broke up clumps of sand near the two line valves on either side of the boiler. Maynard Morris, the restoration head, demonstrated how it worked in May 2016 as he installed the newly rebuilt machinery. It's just the sand coming down to the drivers. There's on the other side two actuators that turn slightly. And this is the mechanism underneath to make those actuators turn. Uh, we had to rebuild part of it because they were frozen in place, rusted in place. In fact, one of them was broken off. And so we used one of them and then we made the new parts. And if you want to see it work, the guy stands on the outside, he pulls the handle. And that's really what's happening in here. And there's parts out here that are moving. So you might want to picture the other side. This one's in the correct position. That one hasn't been pinned yet. 